In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at another old tape format. Now, I wouldn't really say this one was a forgotten format. It's just one that never really made its way into the home because it was more for commercial use. It's the cart, which doesn't really narrow it down. It's often known as an NAB cartridge or a broadcast cart or a Fideli pack, but it's the cartridge that a DJ would use to play back jingles and other pieces of pre-recorded audio. Now, it's taken me quite a while to find a machine to be able to demonstrate these to you but I've finally picked one up so let's get on with it. Fully functional cart machines don't appear on eBay very often, in the UK at least, and the model I've managed to pick up here is one of the earliest examples. This is the Spotmaster 400A. It first went on sale in the early 1960s, but was on the market for quite a number of years after that. In fact, I've got a brochure for the Spotmaster range here that's from 1974. By that point, the machines that they were selling looked like this, so quite a bit more modern than my device, which could really pass for something that came from the 1950s but it is still for sale in the catalog it's now being advertised as a budget model dependability at the lowest possible cost let's have a look at the specs now the tape in one of these cartridges runs at seven and a half inches per second there were other speeds that were available, but generally that was the accepted standard. Now, if you look at the bottom here, the queuing accuracy, it can queue to 0 0.1 of a second and it can start within 0 0.1 of a second. The idea is you queue up the jingle or whatever you're about to play. It'll get it spot on. And as soon as you press that start button, it'll start playing immediately, which is exactly what DJs needed. Let's have a look what's inside one of these cartridges. Well, obviously we've got the tape in the middle there. It's only a small small amount of tape on this one. I think it's a 70 second uh, loop. So it goes from the inside around the bottom and then back on the outside of the reel again. Now this tape is locked in place. There's little teeth there you can see which are holding it. But when you push this bar, it releases it. So I can spin it around now. You can see how it operates the tape pulling from the center of the reel and then depositing back on the outside of it again. Because of the way the tape is spooled, you're unable to rewind one of these cartridges because the tape just gets messed up. You can't put it back on the inside of the spool again. So machines had a Q button or an automatic fast forward, which would take it past the blank section on the cartridge and get it queued up just right for that jingle to play as soon as somebody pressed the start button. And the way that it queued is that it would listen for a tone. The early machines were mono, so they'd have a mono audio track and then a track for queuing with a tone on it and then the later ones were stereo with two tracks and then the queuing track but the queuing track just has a beep on it which precedes the jingles so it'll queue up to that point and then as soon as you press start it'll play now my machine is a bit of a weird one it doesn't have a queuing button and also it came with this rather large cartridge now the earlier machines did have cartridges of this size that were available as well as the more standard carts but you can see here on an advert from the time we've got the three different sizes of fideli pack if you look on the right here we've got series 300 series 600 and series 1200 that big cart i've got is a 1200 which means that at seven and a half inches per second i can record up to 31 minutes of audio on it. Of course, they go all the way down to just a few seconds in length on the smaller cartridges. At some point, the 600 and 1200 size cartridges were phased out. So now you can still buy cartridges, but the only size you can get are the smaller 300 size, which go all the way up to seven and a half minutes in length. Now, when I bought my machine, it was advertised as being untested. And normally I'd recommend that anyone runs a mile if they read those words, because it usually means it doesn't work. However, on this occasion, I noticed on the pictures on the advert, it had an unusual power plug on the end. And I was imagining the chap selling it hadn't been able to plug it in to test it. So I thought I'd give it a bit of a go and see if this one works, because I've been unable to find one that someone's advertising as functioning perfectly. So all I need to do is take the wires out of that plug. I'm going to put them into this uh, quick test socket device somebody recommended I should get hold of one of these and it was a good recommendation they're spring-loaded clips at the bottom we've got a fuse in the top and a light to show when it's working and it's just an easy way to wire something up just to test whether it's working before you put a proper plug on the end so I'll plug that into my extension lead and we can see that the once I've got it in there we can see the light on there has come on so we've definitely got power from that end let's see if it switches on 
And sure enough, it does. The light comes on and there's a faint hum coming from inside the machine. So now let's try and play this cartridge. I wanted to unravel the mess that's inside here and put it back together. And when I got in here, I realized it was a little bit more messed up than I initially thought. There's a bit of plastic broken off here. That was supposed to be connected to a spring, which in turn is attached to a strap, which goes around the outside of the tape to hold it in place. I realized I'd need to splice out a section of the tape as well. And I didn't have any splicing tape, so I ordered some of that, but I'd put that to one side for the moment. Instead, I'm going to use this cartridge here, which I bought about a year ago, thinking that it would be easier to get hold of a cart machine to play it on than it has been. Now on this cartridge is Dre Day by Dr. Dre. That's a record from 1996, so relatively recent for a cartridge to be used. I wasn't really aware that radio stations put whole records on cartridges. I just thought they used them for jingles and things. But looking online since, I've seen quite a few for sale where they've got individual records on. And I'd imagine that that's to make things easy for if someone just comes into the radio station, you give them a load of carts and say, right, that's the stuff you're going to be playing today. Stick it in that machine, press play when you want to play the track. It's a lot simpler than messing around with CDs or vinyl. One of the benefits to having this older style of cartridge machine is the output is over a standard quarter inch jack. And that's a benefit because I can just plug it into my existing equipment. The more modern devices quite often had unusual connectors which were designed to attach up to a console. Now if we open up the lid of here we can see it's quite a simple setup. We've got a record head and a play head. If we zoom in a bit we can see that they've got two pickups on there. One of those is for that cueing track to listen for those tones and the other one is a mono head and to the right of there we've got the pinch roller now that retracts into this hole when you move this lever into the release position which then means you can slide the cartridge over the top of it now the cartridge i've got here is designed to fit against that stopper on the left that's a smaller size cartridge of course the larger one would straddle that stopper but you can see on the right here where the hole is in the cartridge that's where the pinch roller will move up inside when you move it down like this now as soon as you move that lever down you'll notice the capstan is spinning at the back there so that means it's ready to start and all i have to do to get the tape to start would be to press play the electromagnet just moves the pinch roller in a little bit against the capstan and it starts immediately so all i need to do now is put this cartridge on here and then we can have a listen to it so i just need to slide it in you can see i'll move the lever into the forward position the pinch roller's inside so i just need to press start <laughs> And you could see how quickly that started. It was immediate and also it had been queued up into the right position by the previous machine that the cartridge had been played in. Now you'll notice the VU meter isn't moving on mine. That's only for recording purposes, not for playback. I've also noticed as well that this cartridge machine isn't responding to any cue tones. It'll just play the cartridge all the way through over and over again. It doesn't automatically stop and it won't automatically queue up to the next spot. Now maybe that's because it needs some external equipment, but it still means I can play these cartridges which is something that I'm very happy about. So now that we've got that one working let's try and get that larger cartridge working and see if we can hear what's on this. Well we've moved forward in time about three days now so I've managed to get hold of some splicing tape so I've fixed up the cartridge. I've also got hold of a mono to stereo patch lead which I can plug into the device and into the camera so we can hear the sound directly from it and in addition I put a new power socket on that lead that was coming out of the back so I can plug in a standard kettle lead. Well, I don't know about you, but the suspense is killing me. So let's find out what is on that giant cartridge. Okay, so what we have here is a cartridge that's been recorded at a different speed than this machine can play. Half the speed, in fact, three and three quarter inches per second. And that got me thinking, I wonder if this is a giant four track cartridge. I think I'd better wind back a little bit here. This is a Fideli pack or a nab cart or a cart, and this is an eight track. Now you might think those two are compatible with one another, they can be interchanged. They can't, the tapes are laid out differently, of course, the tracks on them, but also the Fideli pack has that section, that hole in it where the pinch roller goes into, whereas the pinch roller is actually inside the eight track cart. So you can't physically put an eight track cart on a 
Fidelity Pack machine. However, you can put a four track cartridge on one. And this is a four track, a new old stock one that I bought just to demonstrate this issue. So let me get it out of the cellophane to show you what I mean. A four track cartridge has the same kind of loading mechanism as the smaller size Fideli pack. If we spin it around here, you can see the pinch roller goes into the hole on the back of there, exactly the same as it does on the Fideli pack. In fact, the cartridges are interchangeable. Of course, the layout of the tracks on the tape are different. On a four track cartridge, you've got four tracks. That's two stereo programs and the tape head moves between them when you move a selector on the machine. But the reason I'm mentioning 4-track is they did make large cartridges the same size as the one I've got here for 4-track players like this one here. In fact, anyone want to see Paul Newman switch one of these off? Let's have a show of hands. Yeah, that looks like a majority. So here you go. Here's Paul Newman switching off a 4-track cartridge player. Sure. And ever so slightly less cool, here's me switching on a four track cartridge in a machine that's not designed to play them. By now you should be able to figure out what will happen when I do this, but let's just have a listen. So what you're hearing there is a 3.75 inches per second recording being played back at 7.5 inches per second and you might have also been able to make out a little bit of bleed through from the other program that's on the cartridge because of course the tape is laid out differently to the heads of this machine. But all this preamble is just a way of me saying that I really need to find out what's on this giant cartridge and the only way is to put it onto a different machine because this one can't play it back properly and in fact it's getting tied up inside here as well. Something's not quite right with the way the tape is threaded in the cartridge and it's getting tighter and tighter as it plays. So I'm going to take it out of there and spool it onto my two track reel to reel recorder. Now you might notice at the bottom right there I've got the tape spun around and that's because it turns out inside the cartridge this was in a Mobius strip. It's a double sided recording. Once it had played all of one side it then plays the other side. So there was quite a lot of music on that cartridge. In fact when I added it all together it had just under two hours worth of audio on the tape which consisted of cover versions of popular hits of the 50s, 60s and through to the early 70s. I suspect that this was used as a background music cartridge. It turned out it wasn't a four track tape after all it was just a standard fidelity pack mono track one on either side of the tape and fidelity packs were put to all sorts of uses like this somebody recently sent me a link to an auction where someone was selling a machine out of a church which used to play the church bell sound through a fidelity pack cart and so it turns out that my background music cartridge isn't from this machine, it's just that it fits on top of it. So somebody decided to sell the two things together as one job lot. I have, however, been able to find some more cartridges that I can play on my machine. When I saw these for sale, I just had to snap them up because when I see things like this, it really intrigues me as to what's on them and where they came from. So we're going to find that out right now. Unfortunately though, a number of these are blank, so we'll never get to hear the fastest thing in the air, or thank god it's Friday, or live this weekend off American 3, and this one here's got nothing written on the outside and nothing recorded on it. Now, at some point they will have had things on them, but they're quite easy to blank off these. They're made machines that you could just slot them in and blank the whole thing off in a few seconds, which is presumably what's happened to these ones here. So I'll never get to hear those seven jingles off thing slash music. And this one here had another few jingles on there, including, I hope this is spelt wrong deliberately, Music Bully 10, maybe it's some play on words, or maybe it's the guy's just an idiot who wrote that, but yeah, I'm afraid that one is blank as well. However, this pile on the right haven't been blanked off, so we can have a listen to them. Now, unfortunately, a number of those are on a theme. We've got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, and they're all pretty much the same thing with one word replaced. I'll play one to you now. Wednesday is all over everything Before Wednesday is all over Everything is gonna be better So get up and get her before she is gone There's a whole lot of Wednesday going on And there's one more jingle on that tape which goes like this 
We might as well finish the week off, so let's have a listen to Thursday and Friday. Thursday is all over Okay, those were a bit of a disappointment, but this is the one that I think is the best cartridge in the lot. It doesn't look that exciting. 247 Music Power Jingles 4, but let's have a listen. 247 Music Power Radio 1 Music Scene Much more Radio 1 music! Yeah, so three jingles there, all from Radio 1 here in the UK. Now, I did a bit of research trying to figure out when this cartridge would have been used, and that Music Power 247 refers to the 247 metres that they were broadcasting on up until November 1978, so this cartridge will predate that date. Now, I don't know how far back it goes, but it's quite likely I actually heard that jingle being played off this very cartridge at some point in the 1970s. And that just leaves one cartridge left to play, which is this one here. Slightly unusual design. I don't know whether the 22nd week of 1972 is a manufacturer or that means something else. The design of this looks a lot like the Echomatic cartridges, which came from Casino. That was an earlier version of one of these looped cartridges, which was used in things like the Zoltan fortune telling machine. But anyway, this seems to be a later cartridge than that. It just looks a little bit like that design, but I can't play it because it doesn't have any sponges in the top here. So I wouldn't be able to put that in the machine so I'm going to have to open this up and do a little bit of a repair job on this now I've repaired quite a few eight track cartridges over the years so this shouldn't be much of a problem you just have to remove this piece of metal here now I'm going to clean that up that's not rust it's just the residue of the glue that's got stuck on there so we need to clean that off so we can stick some new pads on here this self-adhesive draft excluder is the ideal replacement for the missing sponges. I can just snip this to the right size. It's got a glossy coating on one side, but it's self-adhesive on the other. So I can just stick that down to that metal pad there, trim the edges so that it fits nice and neat, and then just slide it back inside the cartridge against the tape, making sure not to snag the tape on any parts of the cartridge when I reassemble it. So now we can finally get to hear what is on this unusual looking cartridge. Good night, darling. Bye bye. Cheerio. Bye. Good night, everybody. Ah. Now after that there was a bit of a bed for a minute or so for the DJ to talk over so I'll just skip past that part and we'll move on to the next jingle. My name's Lee. My name's Flo. My name's Chris. My name's Jean. My name's Flo. We're going to listen to the Kenny Lynn Show. I've drawn a bit of a blank on finding out who Kenny Lynn is, but I'm also puzzled by the first jingle that I played you, the one that goes like this. Good night, darling. Bye-bye. 
You see, it sounds like we're only hearing half of a conversation. We can hear the lady and then there's a blank. It feels like in that blank, somebody else should be speaking. And I'm wondering if perhaps this is a stereo tape that I can't hear the other track on with just having a mono machine. So I've taken the tape and I've threaded it onto my reel-to-reel -reel machine here, which is a four-track reel-to-reel. So I should be able to hear anything else that's on the tape when I play it in both directions. But it turns out we weren't missing anything. There's nothing else there. I even tried it on my two track recorder just for good measure, but there's no other side to the conversation. One thing you can hear though, are those Q tones. I think the sounds I can hear in the background there are a bit of residue from an earlier recording. This tape has probably been reused a number of times, but I think the way this was supposed to work is that Kenny Lynn was talking to these ladies in his studio. He was trying to pretend that he got a load of ladies there that he could speak to. So I'm going to try and do my very best Kenny Lynn. Right, so this is Kenny Lynn signing off for the evening. I hope you've enjoyed the show today. Gotta to say goodbye to all these sexy ladies here in the studio. So, good night, Maureen. Bye-bye. And, of course, uh, Doreen's over there. Good night, Doreen. Cheerio. Oh, I feel a bit creeped out now. Anyway, let's have a go with the recording function on this. Something we haven't tried. The VU meter. I want to see that in operation. So, of course, I've got quite a few of these blank tapes. I'm going to use one of those. I'm going to try and record my own jingle onto it. So to do that, all I'm going to do is put my lead into the input on the back of here, put the 3.5mm stereo mini jack into the bottom of my phone, turn it into the record mode, and if I just play it through first, we can see whether or not it's receiving anything. As you can see, the VU meter is moving there, along with the little jingle I've created. I spent all of five minutes making this, so it's going to be brilliant. So press start to start recording, press play, and uh, let's play it through, and then I can have a listen to it afterwards. I think this tape is a little bit worn, though, so just bear that in mind. This is Techmo. Okay, that was pretty terrible. It looks like the five minutes I spent on that could have been used in a more productive manner, but at least I wasn't chatting up imaginary women. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching this one as much as I did making it. And for me, the highlight was finding an old Radio 1 cartridge in that stack. And it's quite possible that this one will have been heard by millions or maybe hundreds of thousands of people at least, because when this was being played, Radio 1 was the most popular station in the UK. So bit of a fine that one. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. <laughs>